Brewster, thank you so much for taking the time this evening to talk to us. I wanted to get an understanding from you. You're archiving the web. You have been doing this since 1996, I believe. Um, it's been a long time of collecting data. What kind of information first does archive.org collect and, and restore? The idea is to try to make universal access to all knowledge. Can we take all the published works of humankind and make it perpetually available to anybody curious enough to want to have access? So we started by the web and we collect, try to collect every web page from every website every two months. It's a snapshot starting in 1996. In two months, we do another snapshot, 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 snapshot. It's starting to get big. Uh, we collect about a billion pages a week now and, and make them available for free through the Wayback Machine on archive.org. Then we went on to collect television, um, Russian, Chinese, Japanese, Iraqi, Al Jazeera, BBC, CNN, ABC, Fox, 24 hours a day, DVD quality. And now we've made just the television news, American television news, available uh, searchably on archive.org. So you can go and uh, find clips of news, whether it's in C-SPAN or on, on news, and be able to get 30 second to one minute clips. And if you want the whole program, you borrow a DVD, uh, then you can go and uh, use that for whatever you can legally use or you can go back and, and license the, for a documentary of the like. And then we do also movies and music and then we started digitizing books. Uh, we digitize about a thousand books a day. We have 30 scanning centers in eight countries. We work with about three or four hundred libraries at this point um, where we're bringing not only the public domain but also more modern books available to the print disabled. Um, blind and dyslexic, as well as lending uh, these more modern books one person at a time. Even though it's digital, you say, well, you can, give, you can give it to lots of people at one time, but that isn't sort of the balance that libraries have struck over the years. And so we're bringing these materials closer to people. It's what the Internet Archive does. Now, Brewster, if knowledge is the universal truth, and there's uh, the Internet was meant to be the environment that you could share that content and knowledge with everyone. That was the foundation of it. Someone like a Aaron Schwartz, who uh, had the privilege and, and the opportunity to go to a place like MIT, that's very much a country club of, um, of high-end universities. How is his vision of downloading those JSTOR docs in line with what archive.org does in terms of taking information that is publicly produced and making that available? Are they very much in line, and, and, and if so, how? Oh, Aaron Schwartz is one of us, and, and we are one of them. That the, uh, the, he's part of the community that was towards bringing public access to the public domain. Uh, and he steadfastly went and did that, whether it's court documents that um, are now up on the Internet Archive, Google Public Domain Books. Uh, he basically orchestrated the mass downloading of those and putting those into the Internet Archive so people could go and download this in bulk. Um, the Open Library Project, he was the architect here as an employee. So Aaron's work uh, has been carried on and he was instrumental in bringing these things about. Um, the areas of how do you bring more public access is, is, is key, and he in, used computers to do research, so you could find patterns in sets of documents, and he did this with law journal articles to go and uh, detect um, how uh, the influence of funding influenced publishing in academic journals, and it's the sort of thing you can only do by using computers by going and reading these materials. So when Aaron was going and downloading documents from JSTOR, JSTOR is just a digital library subscription service that uh, is a nonprofit. Um, he's doing something that we actively encourage people to do every day. We have APIs to have uh, people go and download masses of quantities of materials from the Internet Archive so they could do, uh, do new research. Yet he was doing this on a nonprofit and they went ballistic and they basically tried very hard to get him to stop and caused MIT to get him arrested, and then he was badgered um, so much when threatened with decades in jail time. For what? For just being a good researcher, a modern age researcher that uses computers? Um, something really wrong. You know, we saw it uh, go wrong with JSTOR's response, was wrong, MIT's response was wrong, the prosecutor's office of the United States government was wrong. and. It ended in a tragedy, and uh, the laws are, are, are incorrectly 
uh, made to, they're right. out of step with the times. Absolutely. Now, Brewster, you know, what in regards to the laws, we have the NSA revelations because of Snowden, because of what has happened with Bradley Manning and Chelsea Manning now, uh, because of the work that errands of the world have done. People are now questioning the National Security Administration, its intent. We had a war that we fought with Iraq for six years, eight, ten years, and costed us $6 trillion based on false intelligence. Now, the same intelligence agency is collecting all this data. We're standing in front of one of your uh, server racks here at the archive. If, in terms of collection of data, collecting bulk data, what is the policy that you want to see implemented on the web from, from both a government perspective and from an access perspective of the individual users? What do you think would be best serving both the users as well as the government agencies? Well, some information is meant to be public. What we put on websites are, are meant to be public. And so going and giving perpetual access through things like the Wayback Machine makes mm -hmm. sense. Though there's some parts of that that don't make sense to be publicly perpetuated. People's personal blogs sometimes are just not what they want to have access to. So people put robot exclusions on their websites and that will take them out of the Wayback Machine, even retroactively. Or they write to us and they have, and we take things out. We think that's the right balance. But as a reader, if you're going and reading a book or uh, looking at web pages, the idea of having a third party, whether it's a government or a corporation spy on you, is, is creepy. And it's worse than that. It, it will change people's behavior and they'll start looking over their shoulders. The, uh, the advice I had from my parents that grew up during the McCarthy area was always keep your head down. Don't, mm -hmm. Just don't make any waves. But this doesn't make any sense. That's not how you make a, a country that's successful and moves forward and does bold, interesting things. It's not by being scared. It's by knowing that the government has your back, not is has a gun in your back or is watching you so you have to keep looking over your shoulder. That's not the way things should work. So we need to protect reader privacy and we want we need to make things as open as we possibly can. You say, how do you do both of those? But some things like the law, public domain materials, journal literature, all of that should be absolutely open and free to be used in onesie twosie and with computers in new and different ways. Uh, and we should protect people's privacy absolutely. Now, you guys do amazing work in terms of archiving digital uh, and digitizing books. Um, and most recently, about two, three days ago, I heard there was a fire. Could you tell us what happened here at the archive? Yes, three days ago, unfortunately, there was a fire broke out in the middle of the night in one of our scanning centers. We operate 30 scanning centers uh, in eight countries uh, in the world. And the one that was here in San Francisco, uh, there was a fire that started at 3 o'clock in the morning. It destroyed cameras and lighting equipment. Fortunately, no one was hurt, and it, was, it didn't damage very many uh, library materials. So uh, there's no data loss. Um, so we were very lucky. And it's sort of a wake-up call that, yes, we do need to make copies to be able to preserve. In the course of history, libraries have been burned down and raised to the ground. I noticed we were sitting, standing in front of all these servers. How is the data that you're keeping in this facility at the archive.org being replicated and made redundant elsewhere for security and, and redundancy sake? So we try to take care of the data well by making copies. So we have a copy here, and you're looking at uh, some of the primary copy of the Internet Archive. Just right here is cool. about two and a half petabytes of data. It goes mega, giga, tera, petabytes. So it's, it's a huge amount of information. Um, but it's also, there's a replica of this in either Redwood City or, or Richmond, California. There's also a partial copy in Alexandria, Egypt, and in Amsterdam. And what we'd really like to see is a large-scale swap agreements among uh, live archives in different regions of the world. So we back things up so no institutional failures, no law failures, uh, earthquakes, fires. Uh, we'll basically make it so that uh, the, the treasures that are our digital heritage uh, will ever be lost. Now, Brewster, for people that want to get involved, if they're librarians, they have collections of books, if they are universities and they're interested in taking the archives and, and applying it to their students and making the, the data and the knowledge available, or if they're interested in protecting the, the work of Aaron Shorts of the world, what is the best way for people to engage with archive.org and how can they you know, help you and, and what kind of assistance can they potentially provide? There's a lot of ways to, to work together. 
also uh, on archive.org, people can hit the upload button and upload things, and it's a free uh, service to add things in. There's, uh, there's even robotic ways of going and adding thousands, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of things to the Internet Archive. Or they can copy things from the Internet Archive onto their own servers and to make backups or, or to go and do new research and, and, and try things out. So they can go and be a replica, they can add things, they can donate money, they can donate time, or they can digitize their own materials uh, and we have technologies to, to help with that, whether it's collecting web pages through the Archive It service, which is a subscription-based service, or with uh, book scanning. Um, let's set up some more of these book scanners, and either people can do it on their own and do their, their own digitizing, or we can do it with them. We want to have all of the materials available to the next generation. We have to put the best we have to offer within reach of our children. And right now, if you know any subject really well, it's not on the net. I mean, there may be a Wikipedia page about it, but the, the real deep stuff isn't actually there yet. We're missing basically most of the 20th century. It's just not online. So let's, we've got to fix that, we've got to fix that soon. Well, Brewster, thank you for all the work and passion and dedication you put into this project and archive.org and the work that you're doing in protecting the Fourth Amendment. Thanks again for taking the time to be with us. Thank you very much.